All right, Honkai fans, make sure that you have your tissues real close because Locha is here and only God knows what Hoyoverse will do to us this time. This patch has been absolutely stacked for five stars. And if you saved through Silver Wolf for Locha, then huge props to you because that takes a lot of willpower. You're someone who has their priorities straight. I like that about you. Now that the second and third imaginary units have come to Star Rail, you finally have some new ways to break enemies. And what better way to break into new content than by breaking out your wallet? I'm just kidding, don't spend money on this game. Now that your favorite beautiful blonde man is acquired, I'm going to tell you how to play him and also some of his best builds. If you enjoy these types of videos, like it down below to please the algorithm gods. And with all of that being said, my name is Braxophone and let's talk about Locha. Locha is an interesting healer because unlike regular doctors who spend years studying to hone their craft and obtain masterful knowledge, this guy puts literally zero effort into his work. He just flashes some expensive jewelry and boom, your max health. This is a joke, Lord players, please don't kill me. The other thing that makes him not like regular doctors is that he's out for blood. He scales on attack, which means that he's not only healing off of a stat other than HP, but he's also doing more damage than other healers. When we get to the build section, we'll talk about this more, but for now, the first important thing to know is that he's attack scaling. The second important thing to know is that he's basically an auto healer. His talent revolves around stacks of Abyss Flower, which Locha gains for using his skill or ultimate. When he has two stacks of Abyss Flower, a field is deployed, and in that field, any ally that attacks an enemy gets healed based on Locha's attack. This field counts as a friendly buff. It's a pretty solid healing source for all of your characters, but it actually gets even better when you get a Sanctified Trace, which makes it so that all of the allies that weren't healed by the talent now also get a smaller heal. So basically, for two turns while the field is up, every character has a large window to be healed. Now, he has a skill that heals too, and it's pretty strong as is. Basically, it just heals the targeted character, or a lot. But the kicker is that there's a secondary effect that actually kind of jump scared me the first time it happened. His skill has an auto heal that can automatically trigger up to once every two turns to heal an ally below 50% HP, which also gives you an Abyss Flower stack and gives Locha 30 energy back. The standard stock images way that you would play Locha is basic attack, basic attack, and skill to go skill point positive and get his ultimate once every three turns with the right build and setup. But with that said, if you land an automatic skill heal, you should just basic attack again instead. With an energy regen rope and this combo, all you need to complete your 100 energy bank is to take one hit, KO an enemy, or trigger his auto heal. And if you're playing a destruction unit, you can actually make Locha more likely to be hit by placing him next to that character so he gets cleaved. But keep in mind that you have three turns to get hit or activate the auto heal in the first place, so your odds are pretty good. And if for some reason you aren't getting hit, well, then you don't really need heals, do you? The other way that you can play him is just to spam basic attacks and only use his skill in emergencies. And that also works too, and it's actually even more skill point efficient because you're basically just going to be gaining unless you're in an emergency. Ultimately though, it just comes down to how much and how often you're taking damage. Because if the boss is dishing out a ton of AoE damage, you might struggle to keep everyone alive without Locha's field for two to three turns, or you would have to spam his single target heals, which would not be very fun. But against high single target damage bosses that don't have a lot of AoE, you kind of can just heal as necessary and just gain a ton of skill points. This also makes him a great partner for Asta if you need to use a lot of skill points on her. A key thing to know about Locha's field is that it's based on his turn specifically. Technically speaking, if he only has two turns while his teammates have three before he gets to his second one, the field will still be up for them until Locha takes a second turn, meaning that you can take even more advantage of the healing. Now something else that I want to mention is that in my experience, it's better to save his ultimate for after when the field is gone, so that way you can instantly regain stacks towards his next field, unless you're in a situation where you immediately need that damage or debuff removal from enemies. Which brings me to my next big thing with Locha, the fact that he can AoE cleanse enemies. It's absolutely insane. This ability has absolutely disgusting implications. The idea that a 100 cost ultimate can remove a debuff from every enemy at once is crazy. And you can use that against the self-reviving enemies to make them only have one life and speed up your kills. His ultimate's damage scaling isn't too crazy, but it hits every enemy. So if you're an AOE content, it adds up to a fair bit. On top of that, if you're tired of your characters getting basically stunlocked into oblivion, Locha's trace through the valley gives him resistance to crowd control debuffs, which are freeze, entanglement, imprisonment, outrage, and being dominated. Kafka enjoyers are in shambles right now. Okay. 
No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. His cleansing revival trace will cleanse a friendly character whenever his skill effect goes off, which means he's basically got all of your bases covered for healing utility. He's got cleanse, debuff removal, emergency heals, AoE heals over time. Otto's got the hookup. For trace priority, the best thing to level really just depends on how much damage you're taking. I recommend leveling his talent and skill first, followed by basic attack. Because unlike a lot of characters who you can skip out on basic attack for, with Lancha, he actually deals a decent bit of damage over a few rotations since you're going to be building him for attack for his heals, so it's worth leveling that up. Personally, I leveled my ult last. But with that said, feel free to level in any order, eventually they'll all be leveled up anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. So I already told you what could happen if you built him for energy recharge, but let's talk about all of the build options that you have for Locha to make the most of him as a character, get the most damage and the most heals out of him all at once. Being the hottest healer in the game, Locha has a bit of flexibility with his relics. Uh, Brax, really quickly, can we run that last one back? Your line is being the strongest healer in the game, not the hottest. Oh shit, my bad. Because he's able to overheal your maximum HP so much, you don't actually need to build him for maximum healing in endgame. With that being said, this build is something we've calculated damage and healing for, but at the end of the day, it is a recommendation and based off of my personal experience, so if you don't like it, then, uh, feel free to just ignore the section, I guess. In my experience, 4-piece Wild Wheat is the best all-around option for him as of right now. It gives attack on the 2-piece, which helps with his healing and damage, and the 4-piece is going to give him some speed and basic attack damage, which, again, helps him with his damage output. Alternatively, if you want to play Slocha, I just came up with that one, you guys like it? You can opt for 2-piece Imaginary Damage Set and 2-piece Wild Wheat. Now, what is Slocha? Wouldn't you like to know? For planar sets, you have three main options as of this video. You can go with Fleet of the Ageless for a general attack boost through your whole team, or Space Ceiling Station for a big attack buff on Locha. Both Space Ceiling Station and Fleet of the Ageless require you to run speed buffs, his signature light cone, or speed boots on him though, just to make sure that you can take advantage of the effect. Now, another option that can be decent is Sprightly Von Walk, but probably not for the reason that you think. The energy gain from Sprightly is not enough to make a difference on Locha's ult timing unless you're specifically running light cones that funnel energy to him. The benefit of Sprightly is, one, his best in slot options aren't really that insane, so he doesn't really need them, and two, he can get his healing field up faster. There is also another very specific use for Sprightly that I'll talk about in the light cone section. But with that said, at the moment, it doesn't feel like there's planar sets that are really dedicated to him, and that could change later, but for now, any of those three are fine. Now this also applies to his main relic set too. If there's ever a speed set released in the future, that could be a pretty solid option for him. And if there's ever a planar set that gives you something like effect resistance and attack based off of the effect resistance, the same way that we have an effect hit rate to attack set, that may end up being one of his better options as well. Now for his body piece, if you're looking at main stats, you have the option of running attack percent or crit. And surprisingly, running crit on him will actually improve his damage without impacting his healing too much, and since you'll be using his basic attacks, you can actually see some decent damage gains with it. But for a safer healing output, you'll want to go with attack. For his boots, you're going to want attack or speed. Now there's actually two schools of thought here. Because Locha's field is based off of his turns rather than teammates turns, if he moves slowly, you can get more attacks from your faster characters out. So if you run attack boots on him, he will get his ult slower, but you can make it so it takes longer to actually get to his second turn, and also have higher heals due to you picking attack. But speed is always going to be another option that you have to get his ult up sooner, and also enable space ceiling station and fleet of the ageless, so speed or attack boots are fine. Now for his sphere, you want imaginary damage, and for rope, you're going to want energy regen to get his ult up sooner, which will help him get his field out faster. Locha is a pretty flexible character, and to be honest, playing him either way is going to be fine, but for your convenience, here are the two builds summarized. For Slocha, to have more healing and widen the window of attacks for your team to proc his talent and trace, I personally recommend 2-piece of the imaginary damage set and 2-piece Wild Wheat, and for the planar set, Sprightly Vonwalk with attack percent or crit body, attack boots, imaginary damage sphere, and energy regen rope. If you want to go with a faster Locha build, probably with his signature light cone, you can run 4-piece Wild Wheat with either Fleet of the Ageless or Space Ceiling Station with an attack body, speed boots, imaginary damage sphere, and energy regen rope. Once again, I think it's possible we see a speed set in the future, so if that happens, it could change his best build options. And the same thing is going to apply if we ever get an effect resistance planar set that gives attack similarly to the effect hit rate one that we have. That could be pretty solid. I know that Locha does have resistance to crowd control already, but it's sort of like why run anything else? Yeah, I don't know, this guy just has way too many options because he's good across the board. 
And with that said, let's talk about his way too many options for light cones. Lolcha has a lot of solid light cone options. Unfortunately, most of them are gotcha light cones, so truly maxing them out can be difficult if you're free to play. But with that said, he's such a good unit all around that he'll do his job without any of the top picks anyways. My favorite pick for Locha is, surprising to no one, his signature light cone. You know, the one where he's kneeling over Kallen's dead body. It has a party-wide speed buff after you use his ultimate, and it makes it very easy to get some extra team value out of just playing him normally. It's good for his kit in general with attack buffs and bonus energy, but it also has solid stats, and I'd recommend it if you have it. Now, if you do have post-op conversation, at at least S2, you can guarantee his ult will be up after two basics and one skill without taking any extra damage, getting KOs, or getting extra skill procs. This is something that I talked about a little bit earlier in the kit section, where if you use two basic attacks and one skill with an energy regen rope, you are roughly just 10 energy away from ult, which is basically just getting hit, knocking out an enemy, or proccing his extra heal. All of these options will get you to his ultimate, but if you do have post-op conversation at at least S2, you can guarantee his ult will be up 100% of the time if you run it alongside Sprite on Walk. Overall, it just fixes all of the RNG that you might encounter. It's a pretty solid option. Now, outside of that, if you have shared feeling, I'd actually recommend that one next, because shared feeling is really insane and not a lot of people realize how good it is. Basically, it increases your healing bonus, but it also gives energy to your whole team after using a skill. I actually extensively tested this, and it turns out it does not trigger on Locha's automatic skill for some reason, but regardless, it's still a good pick on him, just like it is on other healers. You're still able to get a little bit of energy out of it whenever you intentionally use his skill. And even better, significantly better, in fact, with superimpositions. Next up, despite it giving HP, which Locha doesn't scale off of, Time Waits for No One is a great choice for Locha just for base stats and healing bonus. And if we see any consistent way to raise effect resistance in the future, like a planar ornament set or something, Perfect Timing will be another great choice for Locha and potentially one of his best light cones. Quid Pro Quo is your free-to-play energy sharing option, and it's a decent choice if you don't have any gacha cones. If you're concerned about healing though, you can throw Cornucopia on him at S5 for some healing bonus, and if you're playing Locha fast rather than slow, Multiplication can be a solid pick for him, though it will technically shorten the duration of his field, so it's worth keeping that in mind. Also, with your 3-star light cones, the base stats are really low, so your attack, HP, and defense will be a fair bit lower. Now lastly, you can use Warm Shorten's Cold Knights, but the whole effect is kind of bad on him, except for the ally healing, and the base attack is really low, so I personally don't recommend it. Overall, you can just throw most light cones on him and it's fine, but you definitely would like to stick to any of the gacha cones I listed just to get the highest value. No weapon rankings for this this time, because honestly, it all is so variable based on the content, the amount of hits you're taking, your super imposition. I, there's, there's way too many variables, so we're going to take this time to move on to Locha's team building. So I actually ended up redoing this entire team section, and the reason is because initially I was just saying, throw Locha in anywhere, and it doesn't really matter because he's going to get a lot of value. He's a healer, he has auto heals, he has a, a dispel on enemies, and he's just got a lot going for him, right? But there's one thing in particular I did want to mention about him that makes him get more value just by the way that he plays. So what I wanted to talk about first is his ability to auto heal your team effectively whenever your teammates are attacking. Because of his field being based off of his turns when they rotate around to him, if you get three attacks in before Locha's second turn comes up, you get three heals instead of two. And what that basically means is that if you play characters that are extremely fast or can fit more attacks in before Locha can attack, that can effectively make it so he's healing more without actually putting in any extra effort to heal. And because of that, he has a lot of very flexible carries that he can run with. Uh, for example, you can run him with Zila, you can run him with Yencheng, who is also very, very fast. I'm not recommending Silverwolf as a carry unless you have Eidolons, but Silverwolf is a fast character that could potentially get three attacks in before Locha gets his two. If you're playing characters with Tingyun, who also apply speed buffs, they're also going to be able to attack more frequently than Locha would be in theory. You're not always going to be able to get three attacks between, but when you do, that means that he's getting more healing and you're getting more use out of his kit. So because of that, you can run someone like Locha, Zila, and Tingyun, and then if you wanted to run a fourth character, that could be a debuffer. Silverwolf is gonna be really good here. Now the downside is if you ran Locha and Tingyun like this, you could run into issues where like sometimes you apply lightning weakness, which is not ideal. Sometimes you apply imaginary, it's not ideal. You do really, really want the quantum, but as we talked about in my Silverwolf video, that would only be 33%. So what you could do instead of Tingyun, if you wanted to, is run Yukong. 
And Yukong actually is a character that Locha can benefit from as well. Now, because of the way that Yukong works, where she's just buffing your next two attacks, no matter what the order is, uh, it can seem kind of bad because like some terms you might end up missing Zilla uh, and you could just buff Silver Wolf and Locha. But for the most part, this attack buff that Yukong has can actually help out Locha a lot because it's going to increase his personal damage when he uses his basic and it's going to increase his heals. And by running Silver Wolf and Zilla like this, you are effectively either getting Imaginary Break or Quantum Break and Yukong actually has a high break gauge as well so because of that this team can be a decent option if you have it and otherwise you can literally just slot locha into any team as i was mentioning a while back like if you wanted to use something like susong and if you wanted to go for something more like this that had a lot more type coverage just depending on the content you're in uh debuffs enemy defense lowering this can be good now as i mentioned before locha has a mass dispel Pela also has a single target dispel odds are you're not going to need both of them but uh just for example's sake i did want to talk about bringing a buffer and a debuffer uh, because that's an option that you have that could be pretty good and lastly playing locha with clara can also be awesome because clara you're basically trying to funnel all of the damage to and in a way clara is sort of a tank character that can dish out a ton of damage when she's taken the right hits and because Locha has that auto heal, uh, he can automatically heal Clara up without actually having to cast a skill. Using Clara with her pseudo taunt will force enemies to focus on her and effectively proc Locha's skill, which is going to give him energy, etc., etc. So just playing Locha with someone like Clara can be very good and productive. Also, if you want to be like even more energy efficient, you put Locha right next to Clara because you do want to try and take about 10 energy worth of damage, which is, I mean, honestly, just taking one hit to be able to get his ult up on time. So with that said, he's an extremely flexible unit and you can throw him in most places, but with Clara in particular, I really like to play him this way. And then also with Yukong, he does see a little bit more value and I felt like that was worth mentioning. So also keep in mind that other party attack buffs like Asta, for example, can also help out his healing a lot and his personal damage. Anyways, that's basically all I had to say about his teams, but I hope that kind of helped you figure out where to go or where to put him. And next up, let's talk about his Eidolons. Locha's Eidolons can look pretty good, and while I've never been someone who encourages people to pull for extra copies, if that's what you want to do, there is a hard stopping point that I recommend. Now his first Eidolon is a party-wide attack buff while his field is up, which depending on how you play Locha can be a pretty dang big asset for your team. Overall, pretty decent Eidolon, it's not going to be absolutely game-changing, but it's good. This might be a hot take, but I don't feel like his Eidolon 2 is actually as good as some folks make it out to be. Technically speaking, it's great because it increases the healing output of his skill in some scenarios and gives a shield in others. So overall, it is always active and you're always getting some value out of it. For early game, this is pretty busted so that you don't get one shot, but once your characters are high investment, the odds of you being one shot are much lower, and purely because of the raw healing output that Locha has, getting more healing or a shield isn't going to make a huge difference practically speaking. This is one of those things where like, yes, in theory, this is insanely good, but practically speaking, you probably don't need it that much. It's more healing, but his healing is already super solid, and the skill doesn't mention anything about the shield providing taunt value or anything like that, so in my opinion, this Eidolon is fine, but definitely definitely not necessary. Now Eidolon 3 is a skill and basic attack level up which is pretty great for both his heals and his personal damage. E4 is an interesting Eidolon that reduces the damage enemies do while the field is up. This is a super powerful Eidolon at low levels, but again at higher levels just because of how much raw healing that Locha has, you might not actually find that it makes that huge a difference. But with that said, it can make your entire experience less stressful since you'll be taking less damage, and I don't want you to get the wrong idea that this Eidolon does nothing because it very much does something, it's just not something that you absolutely need. Eidolon 5 levels up his ultimate and talent by 2, and E6 is the real kicker. Whenever he ults, there is a 100% fixed chance for him to reduce enemies' resistance to all elements by 20% for 2 turns. I was curious if fixed rate still meant that enemies could resist it, since there's some effects in Star Rail that always hit but don't actually say fixed chance, but it's actually just an inconsistency in the wording of the skill. In my opinion, they could have just said lower enemy resistances instead of has a fixed chance to lower enemy resistances, but that's just semantic. At least from what I tested with Sambo's technique, 100% fixed chance means it works 100% of the time. This is honestly an insane buff to your team's overall damage. Locha's Eidolons boil down to more healing, a party buff, and enemy debuffs. And the problem is that the healing isn't necessary unless you're building him for full damage. The enemy damage reduction is great, but again, Locha heals so much that it doesn't actually make a huge difference in current content. And his E6 is busted, but keep in mind that's, I mean, that's six Eidolons. You have to pull seven copies of him. 
In my opinion, if you want Locha Eidolons, the best place to stop is E1, but he's honestly so good at E0 that I wouldn't even bother. I would actually recommend going for his signature Light Cone over Eidolons just to help with energy and give your party a speed buff, but there's also already a lot of good Abundance Cones, so you don't necessarily need that one either. True and real answer to whether or not you should get Locha Eidolons or Light Cone is that you should pull for Kafka, and I don't need to explain why. I hope this video helped you figure out how to build and play Locha, and if it did, make sure to subscribe down below because it really helps me out. We're almost at 200k, and I have a special surprise once we get there, so I I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys are too. Also, comment your, your favorite fruit. Yep, just whatever it is. Wh whatever your favorite fruit is. Go, go ahead and leave a comment. Yep, thanks. Bye-bye.